Hello everyone, how are you doing? I hope everyone is doing good. So welcome to another video of uh, Origin and Evolution of Life. In fact, this is the last video of our chapter 5, uh, Origin and Evolution of Life. Okay, got right now. So in this video, we cover the last topic that is speciation, inter and intraspecific, geological time scale, which you will be doing for self-study. And uh, in short, the last topic, human evolution. Okay, so let's begin directly with speciation. Uh, there are two types of speciation. In the previous video, we have covered speciation in detail. What is speciation? We will be doing it briefly again. So if you have not checked out a previous video on speciation, please check it out. So what is speciation? Formation of new species. As simple as that. Formation of new species from the pre-existing ones. Uh, one of the examples that we saw, the detailed video of speci uh, speciation was Darwin's finches. Yes, Darwin finches, that is the birds uh, which moved from uh, South America to, to Galapagos Island. And then uh, there it uh, got adapted to the local environment and uh, developed uh, different phenotypes depending upon the uh, environment uh, over there. Okay. So, led to formation of a new species of the birds. So, from the pre-existing species, a new species is formed. This is what is meant by speciation. And what are the species? Basically, a group of similar organisms that can now interbreed, produce a fertile offspring in nature. So, a group of similar individuals, similar organism, they are capable of doing sexual reproduction among themselves, produce children, produce fertile offspring, progeny, and uh, this leads to formation of new species. Now, this new species can be formed by following modes. There are many, many types, but in your syllabus, there are uh, two types, okay, in, under the heading of intraspecific. Intra means within, okay, within the population, within the population. So, you have only two types, there are many more, but for you, it's uh, in your syllabus, that is allopatric or sympatric, sympatric or patric, however you pronounce it. So, two types of speciation that we need to know is allopatric and sympatric. We have understood what is speciation, formation of new species from the already existing one. And this new species which has formed now, can now interbreed to sexual reproduction and establish its own population, expand its own population. This can be done by two modes. Uh, one is allopatric, then is sympatric. Okay. So now we move to the examples, uh, the two types of speciation which occurs uh, intraspecific, uh, that is uh, within the species. The, for example, if you can see the picture over here, uh, two squirrels, uh, but uh, the family is the same, but different species might evolve. Then two types of insects feeding on the same, uh, uh, sorry, different species of apples. But the population is the same, different species will evolve from it, okay? There is no, uh, I mean, uh, the family, let's say, for example, what you can see on the screen is the birds, okay? But different species of birds will evolve due to certain reason. So, how is that possible? So, the first type is allopatric speciation. So, there was an original population of the birds. Again, here, a uh, very common example is, uh, we are going to take of the same Darwin's finches, okay? Darwin's finches, that is the birds, a group of birds, right? So you have the original population, okay? Then because there was some geographical barrier, the birds were flew from one uh, place to another place, uh, let's say from mainland, from the homeland, they migrated to, some migrated to this island, some to this, some to this, some to this. You can see different, different types of these uh, finches. A woodpecker finch, the large ground finch, different beak color, shape of the uh, beak, uh, size of the beak, small tree finch, 
then vampire finch, then large cactus finch. This was the original finch, native, mainland, original, okay, original population. Then, because of now the geographical barrier you can see over here, they all uh, flew to the Galapagos Islands, these are the cluster of Galapagos Islands. And now what happened? One, uh, this brought about speciation. This we have discussed in detail in the uh, video of speciation. Please, if you have not checked out that video, please check it out. Uh, this resulted into what? Now green and blue. Now, after, let's say, after 100 years or some period of time, they developed according to the local environment, depending upon the environment over there, the nature, uh, the temperature, the availability of resources, the kind of food that they are having, the type of fur they, that they will have, the color, everything, it won't change. Now, if, for example, now this woodpecker finch wants to go back to Edukor, to the mainland finch, uh, to the mainland uh, area, so this bird will not be able to reproduce uh, with this, you know, or do mating with this uh, original bird. Because now both of them uh, are completely different. This is another species of bird. This is another species of bird. So uh, resulted into different species of bird because of time, because of the ge geographical barrier and over a period of time, both the uh, geographical barrier and over a period of time, it resulted into allopatric speciation. Okay. Another type of speciation is, so here there is a geographical barrier. But in sympatric, if you will see, sympatric original population is there, but within the population, there is no geographical barrier. Can you see a geographical barrier? No, it's just a matter of time. So within the population, without any geographical barrier, isolation took place and speciation resulted. Isolation took place within the population and speciation resulted. One of the famous examples is of the uh, apple maggot flies who feed on the uh, red apples and some of them feed on the green apples. Original population was the same, but uh, some went on feeding red apples, some went on to feed on to the green ones. And because they feed on to different, different apples, uh, the original uh, insects, the uh, flies, they got uh, different phenotypes, uh, the ones who are feeding on the green apples. Okay, so gene flow has been reduced between the flies that feed on different food varieties. So this sympatric is uh, basically, they are not two different species, but they live in the same area. Like you might be wondering how one species can become two separate species. Huh? Yeah, even though they still live in the same area. Uh, in case of Darwin finches, we know in Darwin finches, one species, a uh, few birds, original birds migrated to uh, the Galapagos Island and then uh, because of the environmental changes and all uh, environmental factors, uh, they had to adapt and it resulted into change, adaptation and new species are formed. But in case of sympatric, what is happening? That was in case of allopatric. Sympatric, they are living in the same area. Species are also same, but how they it evolved into two different species? Uh, maybe due to mutation, oral frequency or behavior change or reproductive change. This all we have discussed in earlier videos. Okay, seasonal reproduction preference. Yeah. So consider what the uh, the example that we are uh, doing in sympatric is a uh, flies, a group of flies that are of the same original population. Uh, there are two food sources for them. So in that same area, they have two types of apples: red apples and green apples. As you can see in the picture, uh, same population of uh, bees. And now you have two uh, types of food, red apples and white apples. Some feed on red apples. First, first, all of them were having red, red apples. Uh, okay, but at some point of time, the flies begin to prefer green apples. Earlier, everyone was feeding uh, the red one. But I don't know, uh, you know, due to many of these reasons, uh, some might go and eat green ones. So no interbreeding took place, nothing. So now what happened? New population of flies uh, will have genetic variation in its gene pool because of the nutrition, because of certain genes which are there in the green apples, they might flow to the uh, particular group of flies. 
So as they continue to mate with the other members of their mate group, these variations will become more prevalent in the population. And over a long period of time, an entirely new species might develop. Okay, so this is basically a hypothetical example. Uh, not actually appearing in nature, but uh, just to give you an understanding of sympathetic uh, species. So no interbreeding, but they will live in the same area. So now new species might evolve over a longer period of time. Okay, so this will earlier which were a part of the same population, now they have split it, split it into two different species. This is what we mean by sympatric speciation. Another speciation, now that was interspecific within the same uh, group of population, now this is uh, outside, interspecific, hybridization, outside the species. So two different species on crossing, Okay, may give rise to a new species, two different species. For example, a horse, an example, a donkey. Time and again, we are taking the same example. This is also fertile individually, this is also fertile individually. But when they are mated, horse and donkey, what do you get? You get an infertile mule. Mule. Or in the case of a male horse and a female donkey, you get a hemi. In case of a male donkey and a female horse, you get a mule. This is two different different organisms, that is a horse and a donkey, different species. When you cross them, you get a totally new species. This is because of mating, intermixing, mating, okay, carrying out sexual reproduction. So this is also a kind of speciation which can interspecific. Okay, so now we move to the last topic that is the human evolution. So having understood all the different terminologies and uh, different concepts regarding origin and evolution of life, we finally arrive to human uh, evolution. Okay. So uh, let's just understand briefly how you know they might have uh, humans might have evolved. So animals called lobe fins were first evolved into first amphibians that lived both on land and water. So from the lobe fins, uh, amphibians might have evolved. Okay, evolved. Uh, which amphibians are the ones which live on land as well as uh, in water. Then amphibians evolved into reptiles. And reptiles evolved uh, over a period of time, you know, uh, land reptiles were obviously the dinosaurs, of which the Tyrannosaurus rex was who are the largest of them, the biggest of them. Okay, then after the 65 uh, million years, suddenly dinosaurs became extinct. Okay. Then uh, mammals uh, were uh, mammals were uh, evolved. First mammals were like shrews. Then horses are of small size. Mammals were viviparous at that time and protected the unborn young inside the mother's body. Yeah. Uh, mammals were more intelligent in sensing and avoiding danger at least. So when reptiles came down, mammals took over the earth. So it began with the low fins. Then uh, amphibians, into reptiles, then into larger reptiles, then uh, larger reptiles are the dinosaurs. Over a period of time, they became extinct. Then mammals came into picture, okay, uh, which were giving birth directly to their young ones. Okay, they were more intelligent. So when reptiles era finished, mammals took over the earth. Uh, so earlier they were reptiles. You can see over here turtles, lizards, snake, uh, chotoris, crocodiles, birds, and mammals. So first there were early reptiles. Okay. Uh, they all got extinct. Extinct, extinct dinosaurs, and finally mammals are remaining on all. So even some some kind of mammals are also on the verge of extinction. Okay. So uh, this is the chart that's there in your textbook. You can go through it. Okay, just for your understanding, nothing there, too much uh, memorizing over here. 
but you should be knowing the uh, breaking up of all these uh, into uh, different different parts okay so the mammals can be broken down into the pouched mammals egg laying mammals and placental mammals we come into under this category that is uh, humans are developed uh, under inside the mother's womb with the correction of placenta to the mothers the poached are uh, sorry pouched like kangaroos etc they are marsupials uh, the egg laying mammal the chickens the hens the eggs uh, okay the ones are uh, snakes uh, the, sorry snake is for the child are uh, the ones who lay eggs okay so they are known as monotremes yeah and uh, we are the utre we we uh, we, uh, we trace back to utreians then under that primate order is primate class is mammalia order is primate you know all these terminologies from your 11th standard which is further divided to suborder prosimi and anthropoidea uh, these are like more or less resembles uh, monkeys and you know uh, monkeys and humans uh, and uh, lion tigers they have this uh, 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 different uh, features okay lemurs and crassiers pictures are there in your textbook then anthropoidea further Clavers are classified into New World monkeys, Old World monkeys, and Homo nidia. New World monkeys, long peri non perihensile tail. Uh, the longer uh, ones, longer tails. They have shorter tails, like the squirrel monkey, the spider monkey. Then old monkeys uh, like you know macaws, langur, and baboons. You don't find them now these days. And then uh, now this Homo nidia is uh, further having examples like you know tailors, great apes. then they further are classified into arboreal apes gibbons uh, semi arboreal apes gorilla these are all different different varieties of monkeys only orangutan you might find one or two your uh, few of them on planet earth and uh, which uh, uh, which are resembling and then hominidae is mostly erect posture ones that is the human being so they have we, we all uh, have similar uh, characteristics but very much different from one another but similar you know these are all uh, monkeys different different types of monkeys and finally the human beings are falling at the end okay so you just have to go through it for understanding the evolutionary pattern of human beings okay we can have a go through uh, quickly so beginning with uh, like at the primitive time beginning from uh, this uh, dry dryopithecus okay Uh, this is uh, time related okay we travel back to time back to time at the beginning and uh, giving rise to uh, ev the evolution of different different uh, you know monkeys and then finally evolving into humans so dryopithecus like ape type Uh, the animal the human beings more look like apes then ramphitis more man like okay few fossils of man like bones discovered discovered in ethiopia and tanzania so man like primates so uh, the fossil fuels which were found over here they look more like man height was up to 4 feet then australopithecus australopithecus Uh, they were uh, found in eastern african grassland uh, they were uh, found to hunt with stone weapons they ate fruits then they further evolved into homo habilis these were first human like being homo nid okay their brain capacities were approximately 600 to 800 cc they did not eat meat then they further evolved into homo erectus uh, which had a comparatively larger brain and then they ate meat uh, Uh, eight meat. This further evolved into Neanderthal man, something forty thousand one lakh years ago. Brain was approximately this size. They lived in uh, East and Central Asia. They used to have uh, hides onto their body from protection uh, for protection against heat and cold wind. And uh, they were buried when they were dead. And finally evolved into Homo sapiens, something ten thousand seventy five thousand years ago. prehistoric man you can say okay like early history uh, they used to have art okay develop they did agriculture they did human settlements some 10000 years ago so that's all so now uh, this has been what is today's 
uh, today uh, today's uh, human being looks like so we fall under homo sapiens okay so that's all with regards to this chapter the last part is human evolution so just for a brief understanding you don't have to go and learn big big answers on this just a flow chart from uh, where it started and where it ended uh, that is enough for you to know just to have a rough idea if there is uh, any mcq or one line r so you should be able to answer uh, and uh, the geological time scale you would be going through it on your own okay basically scientists have come up with this time scale just give us a fair idea to classify things that from where it started you know based on the evidences fossil evidences and uh, the analogy homology evidence that we see embryological evidences connecting like all that stuff so scientists have just uh, created these era uh, for understanding uh, how humans came into existence different species came into existence okay so you can obviously read and go through it it's interesting some of you might uh, be more interested in this so you know if we, this uh, earlier life forms they were like evolution of humans uh, how did they look like lives of mammals in the cenozoic area then dinosaurs became extinct then jurassic came into picture then like this then uh, reptiles came insects came came as in they evolved sort of okay so different different areas with respect to the period and their life forms and so many millions of years ago so that's there okay so this is just 2.6 million years ago uh, so this is like the, it is going downwards so the earliest is this then middle and then latest latest okay uh, you can read a note on it uh, either online or from your uh, textbook and reach out to me if you want to know anything more so that's all for this chapter thank you take care uh, bye bye in the next video series we will be with another chapter that is plant water relation